Everybody, welcome back to Trek Yards HQ. I'm Captain Foley. And I am at the second HQ, far less fancy in England. Um, but you know, we, we have some H and we have some Q. And together, form Trek Yards, the strength of the f Federation. I mean, of this channel. Um, as for the strength of the Federation, what about Starfleet HQ? I think it's probably a good time to discuss Starfleet HQ as we've seen it so far um, in Discovery Season 3. Yeah, it's a space station that forms a bubble. A static warp shell without the warp shell bit is always what I think about when I watch it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> exact same shapes. <laughs> um, no, it's it's kind of neat, actually. It's like a mobile um, space dock, like Earth, Earth space dock, you know, um, just not as big, I don't think. It would be good to get measurements on this thing, though. For sure, I think, and I'm sure the energy sphere expands. The more ships that are in there, because it, it draws energy from the ships as well. So, you know, they can make it pretty big if you got more of the fleet in there. I think. So. I like how you know all these lines of energy go into random spots, into metal, into glowy bit, into not. So just ah goes in somewhere. But yeah, it's actually not a big station. I mean, the discovery is obviously is, is big in terms of length, but not particularly big in terms of height. Has a great side view, and you can see the window scale. I mean, this thing is probably, what, 60 decks? Assuming the kind of deck height, 60, 80, 100 maybe. I mean, it's not nowhere near Earth Space Dock, um, nowhere near any of the major stations. It's actually very neat. And, and what's weird about it is that if we are to assume that entire middle bit is a, a, a cut-out section of energized particle energy glowy <laughs> and the bottom some kind of power generation stabilizer because there's so few lights there it's just the top this is starfleet hq it's also federation hq if you haven't yet seen that's a lot of important stuff to only factor into a very very small amount of space which is really when you think about it all that being said do they have the tardis tech that we saw <laughs> in enterprise with the ship the small little pod about the size of a shuttle pod but very large interior. Uh, this has been discussed a few times. Did the upgrade to Discovery include this? Because we need more turbo lifts and more room for turbo lifts, so we need more internal volume, don't you know? I mean, those roller coasters um, need to be beating the last roller coasters. Otherwise, what's the point? You, yeah, you can't be refitting bad roller coasters. I mean, that they've got to be bigger and better with more, with more excellent slides, etc. Very, very true, and more loop de loops. But. <laughs> So let's put that aside for the moment. Let's say that's not a thing. Cause I think heard anything about it. it's unlikely the team of Discovery have watched that episode of Enterprise. I'll be honest. I'm just going to... I don't think they have. And and to be fair, I think the mainstream media would report on saying, Star Trek is now Doctor Who. If they actually had, you know, a single, like, room and they walked in and it was the size of a... So I think it's probably safe they don't go with that, even though, yes, the tech rate exists. Although, obviously, you could argue that's when really alternate future that tech was stopped when the time tech was done it could be you know literally to do with time tech that inside the ship is in a different temporal so yeah, yeah, yeah. but yes that's great point move it to the side for a second what do you think about that design <laughs> um it is definitely a funky cool futuristic design but yes there's not a lot of area there for a lot of personnel because when you see it side by side with discovery um there's just not a lot there i mean we do see the top window um, with an actual person outside and it's not it's not big it's really not that big so I'm, I'm kind of concerned actually <laughs> um, I'm sure a lot of people hang out on their ships as part you know they just beam in to the station when they need to but still being the heart of the Federation and Starfleet is concerning to me with it only being this large although it's a good symbol of of how much small we've got obviously and you can imagine if they were leaving Earth with limited resources this is a base that can create a successful hidden bubble. You don't need a space dock. You, you know, you're not building ships. As far as I'm concerned, they're not actually building ships. And you don't need space dry docks anymore. And I'm sure this can still fit lots of robots. I mean, you know, the, the as tech improves, it often gets smaller. And you can see a lot of the same, you know, to build a new ship, to refit, refit a new ship needs to be smaller. It's fine. But really, I think everyone's going to be living on the ships. I don't think a single person lives on the space station, I'll be honest. Um, it's just too few bits of rooms, too few. It, it, it's a, it's an office. It's an office complex, you know, which is which is fine, and I, I think it works very well. I'm still waiting to see the Federation part of it, as opposed to the Starfleet part of it. Uh, I, I understand this is probably a lower budget season, given the effects work, the sets, 
the lack of, you know, then that's fine. You get more creative with less budget. And so we only see these two rooms. In fact, the bottom room is every single room. Every single room is the same room. But it actually kind of works because it just looks like a like an office space. Um, so I don't think we're going to see much more. And I'm actually kind of okay with that. I like this interior space. I like the focus on it. I like, you know, if we're in he if we're in HQ, I don't need to necessarily be seeing walking through corridors. This big open, you know, bit with this map. But the map is always good to see. You know, you get a real sense of everything in this room. And also the programmable matter that creates the floor as it needs to, um, or the you know closes off this, this section as it needs to i think it's cool i think it would be in line with the badges if the correct badge is there it'll let the floor happen otherwise you know you can't get across that gap i think that's very cool, cool future tech um and a very good security measure at the same time that definitely adds to the cool future vibe for me and also the large star chart up top just the holographic table um and we've seen that many times especially in star wars it's got more of that holographic Star Wars table feel, um, but it's it's really quite quite cool and very bright and clean. It's very JJ esque in that way. It, it feels like the bridge of the JJ Prize, uh, as people call it, the, the the Apple or Mac store. So, mm. I would somewhat agree. I would say it looks more two thousand and one because it is it JJ is cluttered. They have buttons, dials, lens flares, lights. This is simple. You understand this is where the lights are. These are the walls done. So I would actually not equate it to JJ. I, d I definitely get that, but I think it's for far more of an appropriately future as opposed to that kind of weird, you know, let's put hand scanners on the consoles. Yeah. You know, I like the close ups. I like the emitters. I like the, you know, I like when you just see the, the there's released, um, you know, behind the scenes images. And you've got to see two sort of examples of it with less lighting. I like how simple the hull is. Doesn't need to be complicated. It has not necessarily a TOS feel, more of a TMP feel. You know, it's not, it's not greebly, some things that works for. Space stations, I think, work better to be not greebly filled because you don't need everything under the sun for a space station to work. Um, but even in polygon mode, I mean, boy, it is a really simple, simple, simple thing. Um, well, yeah, the one thing that just stood out to me that I didn't really notice before, um, I noticed it when I saw the wireframe from the ready room, um, are the, the panels or the pedals, if you want to call them that, yeah, that pedals are separate. Like yeah. Separate from the um, main body, but you can see in the other views all the energy is streaming from those to form those pillars that eventually cause the, uh, um, which is a, is a neat feature. And I didn't even notice that until just now looking at that. So, it's it's pretty. It's a, such a simple thing. And when you see the long shot, it all looks like one thing. But I like the added thought. In the bottom, is doing a single stream. But I like there's just a bit of extra texture on the top. Yeah, it works. So it, it looks like it's with it's taking energy from the ships, feeding it into the focused center part, and then that is in being released through those um, separate panels. Okay, I never really got that feeling until just now looking at it. I wasn't quite sure what was going on. So I mean, it's it's a really simple, but I would I would say elegant design. Um, I would like to see it not in a bubble, being lit normally. I'd like to see if as in shuttle bays, and also you ask why do you need shuttle bays if you can beam everywhere. Sure, but moving cargo maybe a bit more space, etc. Um, oh, and I also I do like the fact that at the top of the dome, there's a lower planetary sensor dome at the top of the dome. Um, small detail appreciated. I mean, it's not literally not that, but it, I like it. Hopefully, we do get to see more of it at some point. Like it, it as much as we have seen, we haven't seen a lot. You know, um, it's a functional base and a functional set rather than a look. We have all of our sets, etc. Which is okay. It's just not very big, and that's concerning to me. <laughs> I understand most people, most crews and stuff would still be on their ships, but ugh, I don't know. I wanted something a little bit bigger. Yeah. I mean, you've got to, you've got to imagine there's got to be other operational facilities, not as a HQ, but something somewhere else, you know, a bigger space station or a dry dock of some kind, you know, some more specialized systems. I know the Federation is much smaller, but still 34, I believe, or 38 member worlds. There's still a lot of stuff. Okay, they have probably under 50 ships. That's fine. But, you know, it's still about 120 years. And I, I don't know about you. I've played enough games that I know that if this happened, if the burn happened, I would start setting up other outposts on my outer limits so that I would then have more outer limits and start expanding that way. So you got to assume there's more of these kind of at the range of their ships. And then that extends the range of the ships. You start building them a little bit further out. Um, 
Well, I think but that, anyway, I think that'll be the case now. But as as Vance said, you know, we can't focus on that sort of stuff. It's all triage. If that was the case, they could be repairing their long range sensor. They've already got those things. They just stopped working because of neglect. Um, hmm. Hmm. But no, it's good. I like it. I, I, I have very little negative to say about it. I think it works. Just show more. Um, you know, show us and show us the Federation bit. Show us the council chamber with all the Federation member people. I mean, that'll probably be... I'm going to call it as being a two-season arc. You know, season one is about what happened. Season two is how to get everyone back together and, you know, fixing the problems of the galaxy. But hey, that, you know, whatever. I can imagine if even on season two, we'll have a scene where we see this big conference room and there's, you know, kind of like the UN and there's, you know, spots and, and they say, you know, we, we hope... We've sent an invitation to 130 member worlds or ex-member worlds and they, they put all the play settings and then you see a scene... Where they're kind of like in Star Wars Last Jedi and no one turns up. It's like, oh. but there'll be a moment where it's like, there's, you know, 15 spots have been filled and it's like, oh no. And then as the season grows, you'll see, come back to the sequences more and more, but the end of the season will be filled and you'll get this real, you know, I, that's, I'm waiting for that sort of visual, you know, like a representative of the member worlds. And then you get to see a Cardassia and then you'll, like you said uh, in a previous episode, you know, they mentioned a Klingon ship as the, a potentially a Klingon ship as a Federation ship as the, one of the burn victims. So, you know, we see a Klingon representative and a Romulan and a, you know, that would be great. You know, really, really fun. Yeah, it would be the end of Justice League. The Admiral Vance will walk in with Saru and Burnham and go, I can see a big table right here. And all of a sudden the programmable matter, there's a big round table. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, looking forward to seeing more of this stuff um, and hopefully some outposts. And for God's sakes, think about poor Sahil. Go rescue that poor man or give him some other people to talk to. He and deserves fix that, it. He deserves fix that it. that long-range relay. Anyway, guys, you can make that happen. You can make the Federation whole again by clicking that subscribe button and joining the Trek Yards family. Um, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, as I said. Not click the notification bell icon so you get notified every time we upload, every time there's new ships, new tech, or just something new to talk about. We will have videos about it because that's what we love to do, and you don't want to miss out on those, so do all that cool stuff. Of course, if you want to support us doing that cool stuff, it is pretty much really important to support us financially via Patreon, PayPal, join the channel on YouTube or Super Chat. Any of those individual ways do help. If you do more than one, that's great. You know, be a Patreon and Super Chat because one is a sort of a passive monthly, which really, really helps. Gives us a backbone, as we always say. And Super Chat is a great way of having your direct voice heard. We pride ourselves on reading every single Super Chat. Depend doesn't matter how busy this, the live is or not busy, we'll read those out. So if you want to have something said or, or a point made or even say we're wrong, you absolutely can do that at your own whim for as little as, I think, two bucks you can say that. So uh, please do if you can. If you can't, do what Stuart said and just keep watching and we'll see you next time. That's right. So until then, guys, I am Captain Fox. I am Chronicles. See ya. Bye, guys.